through the words of the gospel, may our sins be wiped away. This is the prayer that the deacon or priest says after proclaiming the gospel during Mass. He kisses the book and he says, through the words of the gospel, may our sins be wiped away. It has a nice ring to it in Latin. Per evangelia dicta, deleantur nostra delicta. The gospel then has a certain sacramental power when we hear it with faith. The people in medieval times had an instinct for that sacramental power of the gospel. And after mass, they would come up and ask for a blessing where a portion of the gospel was read over them. And as time went on, so many people wanted this gospel blessing that it actually became a standard part of the Mass, known as the Last Gospel. When we really take it into our hearts, when we meditate upon it, when we make it our own, the gospel can take our sins away. And today, above all days, on this day of the Lord's Passion, we are invited to meditate upon the gospel. The church, in a way, is stripped of her garments. The images are covered. The sanctuary is bare. The liturgy moves abruptly without introduction, and, and we exit in silence. It's all in anticipation of the larger liturgy that's happening during this triduum. All these elements come together to put the gospel of our Lord's Passion at the front and center of our attention today as we pray through the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. But how? These words which we have heard, how can they take our sins away? How can words take sins away? We have heard the story of an innocent man who was tortured to death many centuries ago. Sad, but so what? We have heard a story of jealousy, betrayal, cowardice, cruelty. But what does it have to do with us? It can move us to compassion, yes. But how is it supposed to take our sins away? How many other innocent people over the centuries have been tortured and killed. Just imagine if, instead of the cross, we venerated the hangman's noose, or walked up and kissed the electric chair, or blessed ourselves with the sign of the guillotine. What is it about this man and this death that can take our sins away? Why is it that our salvation hangs upon the wood of this cross. Jesus' death is different because of who He is. He is the Son of God and He is God. He is the Word of the Father made flesh. Therefore, He is the one who can say, I am. And people rend their garments and fall to the ground. Consider that scene for a moment. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. This poor pre preacher from the country with no earthly power, he's about to be seized, judged, beaten, and crucified. But when he pronounces the words, I am, it sends a shockwave through the soldiers, guards, and chief priests. Jesus was in control the whole time. As we have seen in our recent Gospel readings, they have tried to arrest Him a couple times before, but He passed through their midst. He allows Himself to be taken when the time is right. Because He is God, he is not just another miserable man. He is the king and head of all mankind. He is the Pantocrator. 
He takes our hand and leads us through the most terrifying and painful things that human beings can suffer. The universal prayers which we say on Good Friday for the church, for separated Christians, for unbelievers, show that Christ makes a claim on all mankind and wishes to gather all people into his grace. So my brothers and sisters, if we feel ourselves to be weak, if we feel depressed by our continued sinfulness, let us remember what our King endured for us. Let us remember how he longs to show us his mercy. As Pope Francis put it in one of his very first homilies as Pope, the Lord never, never, never gets tired of forgiving us. Let us never get tired of asking his forgiveness. And let us also entrust ourselves to the spiritual care of the mother he gave us from the cross. Through the words of the gospel, may our sins be wiped away.